Now, a few people on my videos have said, oh, well, tell us a bit about your studio. How, how's it all wired up? Um, some people have said, I can't see any cables in it. How do you get everything to work? Well, that's what I'm going to explain now. Now, I used to work for EMI back in the 1990s. I worked at Townhouse Studio in Goldhawk Road, Shepherd's Bush, London. It's not there anymore. It's now apartments. Lots of the big studios have gone that way, really, unfortunately, which is a shame because it was a beautiful place. And the audio wiring of which I was partly involved with is a major, major part of an installation. In a big studio like Townhouse, there simply wasn't time to just plug bits of gear in and get cables. It all had to work exactly you know, when you wanted it to. And that's kind of the ethos that I've worked with with this studio. Now, I bought myself a load of multi-core cable and I basically worked out what it was that I wanted to do here. So I'm going to show you the components of my studio and explain a little bit about the cabling along the way. Now, I've got a, a microphone here, which is there's a, a little floor. I um, don't know if you can see that with the other camera in the way. I've got a floor box here, which directly feeds my mixing desk. So that means that I can plug mics in anywhere in the room without having to trail things and unplug and plug in. That's the other thing, of course. Every time you unplug or plug something in, you're wearing that connector out. So I've got a microphone here, which is connected to this particular channel of my mixing desk. So if I switch it on, one, two, 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 all that works fine. Now I've got some other buttons here. Um, which allow me to send that microphone signal to any particular device. Now, I did have a sound card in here uh, that fed my computer. That's now in uh, another case for my one man band setup. I've got another sound card here and I've actually got to rewire that. So I've got a little bit of work to do, but I've got a hard disk machine here and I've got a tape recorder over here. So essentially the outputs of the mixing desk are on these red faders here. So if I were to, uh, for example, press down uh, these buttons, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, you can see that there are now eight particular meters. If I just take number three down, for example, you can see it's gone. It's only left one, two, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And the idea with that is to essentially feed it, feed this machine with any of these red faders. Now, if I click record on this hard disk machine now, so I'll just move this camera a little bit closer so that you can see that. Here we go. So I've got eight channels ready here to record. So if I raise fader one, you can see the light on the desk and the light on the machine. Now, what I've done is there's a lot of cabling behind this mixer and it's sort of behind, you can't really see it. But I've done a, talked a little bit about cabling and how to make cables on my other videos. Essentially, you have a piece of multi-core cable, which then you cut each cable to length so that you end up with nice, neat connections on your mixer. And this is exactly what we did when we were working at Townhouse, when I was wiring up a 48-way mic bay in one of the studios. It's exactly how you had to work because these things had to last years and years with no maintenance. Because if something went wrong and you, the session had to stop, that's thousands of pounds that's lost. So it had to be done properly. Now, there's number one. If I lower that, and there's number two, etc., etc., etc. Now, number three, I have a problem with at the moment. There's obviously a break in the cable, and I found that to my cost with one of my other demos. I've yet to fix that, but I know about it. Four, five, six, seven and eight. So you can see on this display, you've basically got those. Now, if I move the camera around here and just look up at my um, eight channel tape recorder, don't need that mic because it's the test one. You can see my eight channel reel to reel recorder up here, which is also set to record. So if I raise number one, one, two, one, two, you can see number one lighting up there. Number two, there it is. Notice you can have more than one three. Now, that's slightly peculiar. Three works on there, which means the fault is with the 
the little phono input on the machine. Now phono inputs are not very nice. A tiny little connector, really much room inside to try and get that the wires in. So the fault is going to lie with that machine and not with the output of the mixer. So there's number three, number four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, yeah, there you go, we got all eight. So there are two places that I can record this mic signal. I can either record on my hard disk machine or I can record on the reel to reel machine. And when I had my sound card in there, you could also record on input eight, inputs one to eight of the audio interface as well. Now, as I said, I've got to wire in my newer audio interface, but it's been there for two years and I haven't done it yet. So it means I'm kind of not using this setup maybe as much as I would otherwise. Now, coming back to the mixing desk, I'll just lower this camera down so that you can see this once again. Now, if I home in on the auxiliaries, you can see these. This is the channel that I've got up here. I've also got these controls up here, slightly in the shadow, really, with a couple of those. But I will try and make that a bit better. There we go. So you can see the fader that's up there. And you can see I've got a set of controls up here. Now what those do is that they feed my effects units in the rack over here on the left. So you can see, just uh, looking at the, the left hand side of my room, you can see that there's a rack full of stuff at the top here. So I've got a Quadroverb, which I've done a demo of, I've got a Boss Digital Reverb, I've got an old Roland Reverb and a Zoom Reverb as well. Fantastic bit of kit. Now, if I Switch the mic on again. One, two, two, two. There we go. You can hear that through the monitor speakers. Aux one is wired, hardwired to my quadroverb. That means if I do that, you're now hearing the output of the quadroverb. And that comes back in on an effects return here. One, two, 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 which I can send to the mix or not send to the mix. Sent to the mix, not sent. So, I haven't had to cable any of that up at all. It's all pre-installed. There is an awful lot of work in this. I think it took me four or five solid days to put all the cabling in, but that was four years ago. And aside from the channel three issue in my hard disk machine, nothing has gone wrong. So that means that I can just come in and record. Now, just um, as an aside, we've got um, two, there we go, there's my mic signal back. The next reverb down is hardwired to my next auxiliary control. One, two, and then it comes back on this one. One, two, two, two. The quadroverb came back in on the other one. Two, two, two. One, two, 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 quadroverb. Yeah, echo. And so on and so forth. Aux 3 would then feed my old Roland reverb, which is quite funky. Uh, two, two. Oh, yeah. 1980s reverbs. They all have a character of their own. Now that is a, a little bit about the mixing desk and the recorders and the and the effects there. So I haven't had to plug anything in. Just pressing buttons and raising control knobs does all that for you. Now I also have in the rack, I'll just go and uh, move the... I also have some sound effects, oh sorry, sorry some sound, uh, some um, synthesizers, some sound modules. Now those link to my other mixing desk, which is over to the other side of the studio here. You can see this little desk over here, 
which basically has that's where all my synths come back because there's not enough inputs on this desk to have everything there this old desk here i had as a live mixing desk but that was when we had a big band with lots of brass and all that now it's a trio you just need a little desk to go out live with so this sits in here simply as a mixer both for my sound modules and also for my eight channel reel to reel recorder and it comes in to this desk on a pair of inputs here. So I've got a nice load of hum. There we go, gone. That's the enemy of the sort of analog wiring here, especially if it's unbalanced wiring, is if you've got lots of mains transformers everywhere, you're gonna end up with problems. Now, if I just move the Move the other camera over here. You can see my laptop there, which is recording this demonstration. We've got the mixing desk down here. And the first eight channels here are pairs from various sound modules that I've got in here. Now I've got the Emu E5000 sampler, which is switched off at the moment because it generates quite a lot of noise with a fan. That's another problem with older gear. If you've got lots of stuff with fans, you know, it, play with your mixing and you don't want that. So if I, for example, raise the Emu Orchestra module, there's a little audition button here. Now, if I want to record that to a pair of my channels, all I do is go back to my mixing desk and you can see those two faders up here. So once again, no cabling necessary because it's all pre-installed. Now, when you come up with a setup, it's a very good idea to think about exactly the way that you're going to work. Don't make it too flexible. Things like patch bays, they're great if you have lots of people coming into work, we've got a particular engineer coming in or a particular mix engineer or a particular whatever, a particular band coming in. But if you're by yourself in your own studio, it makes sense to have that bespoke setup because then you don't have to fool around with unplugging and plugging in. Now, cabling wise, multi-core cable is cheap stuff. It is not expensive. Um, even the connectors, you know, if you go Neutrik, which you should do if you're doing a bespoke setup that's gonna work for years and years and years, if you buy enough jack plugs, they work out at about two pounds each. You think, oh, okay, it might cost you 500 quid in jacks and cables, XLRs. In fact, I think it'd probably be it would come in less than that. But as I said before, your patch bay, you know, if you're spending a thousand pounds, 1500 pounds on the patch bay, then you've got all your connectors to buy. So really for a couple of hundred pounds, you can really get this to work very, very nicely indeed.